Great to see you back in part 2. For those who came to this video first, please check out the part 1 beforehand. Now, let's go back to modeling. Now, let's try to close the face and make a skull. First, go to his chin. Select the two opposing edges and bridge them. You need to disable symmetry for this. Make cuts into this new face and merge opposing vertices with merge to center. Adjust vertices a bit. Don't forget to enable symmetry. Also, lift the new part of the chin up and pull it to the front to the neck. I'll soften the edges. Now we're ready to give the head a skull. Create a new cube, press free to smoothen it. Then go to the modify, convert and select smooth mesh preview to polygons. Move it to the head. Press 4 to go into wireframe shaded to see through the model. We will scale this sphere so that the top cap of it will connect to the boy's forehead and the middle will connect to his cheeks. We will delete this part of the sphere completely out. Let's scale the skull to fit the reference. Make sure that the shape fits in all views. When you're finished with scaling the skull, select it and delete away the faces that are directly behind the skull. I'll go into wireframe display so you see which faces you should select. Then delete them. Now connect skull to the head. Select both of them and go to mesh to combine them. We can see the face has more vertical divisions than the skull. Let's add some more edge loops into the skull so that we will be able to connect it to the face through vertices. Enable multi-cut with the edge flow, then make a cut while holding Ctrl Shift. Enable symmetry and we can target weld parts of the skull to the face. Let's make one more cut and target weld again. You can see the forehead part of the skull will need more cuts, so let's add them and weld sides together. In the hole that we have left, we will need two cuts instead of just one. Then weld everything together. Before we do any welding or cutting, slide the edge loops on the skull so they are at the same height as edge loops on the face. Select the first edge loop on the skull and slide it downwards so it's at the same height as the second face loop. Cut a new edge loop to the skull and weld these two together. Do this process of cutting and welding until you come to the top of his ear. After this, make adjustments to the head if needed. I feel that his head looks too much like an egg and I feel I can insert another edge loop into his forehead without a problem. If you want to spread out vertices to make a better topology or make the mesh smoother without changing its shape, you can do this with Relax tool in the Sculpting Shelf. Select Sculpting Shelf and click on Relax tool. When you click on it, this window should pop up. If it doesn't, try clicking on it again. As you can see, there are many options inside the brush, but we will really use only size and strength most of the time. Size changes the size of the brush or the area which affects the model. Strength is how strongly the effect of the brush is applied. If you activated the brush but cannot see the gray circle which indicates how big the brush is, it may be because the brush is too big. Change the number until you can see your brush. I'll leave the strength on 100. I'll enable symmetry and then paint on his forehead and skull. I'll close the brush options so you can see what I'm doing in the perspective view. After sculpting, let's set to face and soften edges again so we don't have that sharp line between the face and skull. Now the head is missing an ear. Return to the modeling shelf and create a new cylinder. Go to the inputs and change the number at subdivision axis to 12. Delete everything away except the top. If edges are highlighted yellow, it means soft selection is still enabled. Press B to turn it off. Center the pivot and rotate the circle for 90 degrees on X and Y axis. Then move and scale it so it's at the position of the ear. Make sure that it's not clipping with the head. We will move vertices to create an ear shape. First, let's see how many vertices are needed to connect the ear to the head. The ear is connected to the head near the jaw, but then it sticks away from the head. In my case, I'll need 5 vertices. Position some vertices to the head, then start shaping the ear.
Let's make another cut on the air. Why? Well, we created a cylinder with subdivision axis of 12 and added a cut on the left side of the ear, so we have 13 edges. That means that we have an odd number of vertices around the circle. But because we want to change triangles to quads, we need to have even numbers. Straighten the ear with scale. Select the edges inside the ear and delete them. We should have an airplane like this. Then make quads in it either with combine or multi-cut tool. After that, we will build the air from it. Select all faces, then extrude them out to form air's thickness. Make a vertical cut into the air. Select the entire edge loop and scale it in height, like this. Select the front of the air and extrude it. Scale it inwards and slide or move vertices to form the inner part of the air. When you are done, select the inner part of the ear and extrude it, then push it in. To soften the edge that separates the inside of the outside, double click to select the edge loop and bevel it. I'll set the fraction number to 1, then delete the inner edge loop that was created. Let's move or slide vertices to form the part of the ear that goes into the ear tunnel. Extrude it again and pull it in, but make sure it's not clipping with the back. If you want to push it further in, just delete the faces at the back of the ear. I'll move the ear a bit away and its back faces further back. I'll bring forward a bit this plane. Now we want to make the same smoother edge transitions as we've done before at the most inner part of the ear. Select the entire inner edge loop, then bevel it. I'll set the fraction number to 1, then delete the top edge loop that was created. If the vertices are overlapping, Make sure to separate them. I'll make final adjustments to the ear. When you're done with the ear, let's also soften the outer edge of it. Select the outer edge with double click and move it. Select all back faces and scale them in. The ear should look something like this. Extrude back faces and scale them in again, then delete them. From this point, we will connect the ear with the head. Go to the front view in the left view panel and rotate the ear. It's very flat as it is now, but the ear goes out of the head at an angle. Rotate it to match the reference. Move the ear so that it slightly clips with the head, but not too much because remember, we have to connect it to it. After you're done, what we will do is completely delete the left side of the face. Because now only one side of the face will have the ear and instead of modeling another ear, we can just mirror the face over again after we are done. Delete some faces away from the ear that we will not need. We know that we must delete four faces away because we will connect the ear to the head on five vertices. Delete these four faces away as well as the four nearest. Let's zoom into the ear. I already know that I will delete four faces away on the skull to form the hole to which I'll connect the ear to. If I delete four faces on the skull, that means I'll be left with eight edges. But on the ear I have 12 edges at the moment. We have to reduce the number from 12 to 8. I'll bridge this hole for this process and you can see we have 13 edges. I'll target weld two vertices at the top and two at the bottom then delete away the middle edges to get quads. Now we have 9, and if we delete this face away, which we don't need, we have 8. Great! If you know your hole in the skull will have 12 edges, make sure ear also has 12 edges, if 16, then 16, and so forth. After this, combine the head and ear together, and use target weld to connect them together. Now we will make a hole into the head. I'll delete this face from the ear that is almost completely inside the skull. Let's see... Delete these two faces away that are right behind it as well. If you have any vertices of the ear inside the head, move them out. This way it will be much easier for us to see how we can connect them together. I'll slide it up so it's almost touching the head's face. And delete the mentioned face away as we will have a first bridge here between the ear and the head. At the top of the ear, delete this new quad we've made a few minutes ago and make two quads out of them. 
so that we have one extra edge. Select these two edges and bridge them together. Let's see how can we continue from here. Hmm. I really want to close the area with the least amount of triangles as possible. I'll bridge these two edges together. I'll move the skull a bit closer. Hmm. Maybe we can make a better transition a bit here. Oh, this looks better. Move the vertex closer to the skull and delete this edge away. Bridge these two together and these two and these two and these two. Now that the ear is connected to the head, we still need to make a jaw and a neck. First, let's delete the faces at the back of the head that are over the neck opening. You can see we still have this part to bridge and fill it up. Slide the back vertices so that we get a bit of curvature because the neck is going to be a cylinder. Select the jaw edges, the edges that are still left from ear to the chin and extrude them. Then move them to form the jaw and use target welds to connect the jaw to the chin and to the ear. We can bridge the edges that are left and adjust them. Your head should look something like this. I softened edges on the model and make sure that the opening of the neck has semi-circular shape. We can create a new mirror of the head. Press D to select pivot point and snap it to the grid while holding X. Select freeze transformation, then let's delete away the history. Go to mesh and open the mirror options. Reset the settings of the tool and you can click apply. In the poly mirror window, set the merge threshold to 0.01. .01. Pick the number that doesn't cause the vertices to merge too much. I'll create a new duplicate of the eye, but you don't have to. You can see that the edge of the nose is really sharp, so set the faces and soften the edges again. If we did everything right, the vertices should be merged correctly. And it looks like they were. Now we have both sides of the head, and we have to join the head to the body. Well, because it just can't float around. If we select edge loops at the opening, we can see we have 18 edges. The neck has only 16, so we need to also have 16 edges on the head. We will do this by merging two vertices at the back of the neck to the middle. Then delete the edge to get a quad and slide vertices at the opening to spread them out evenly. Now we have 16 edges. Go to the neck and let's lower it first a bit so we will see what we will be doing. Select the head and the body, go to mesh and combine them. Select both edge loops and press bridge. We will smoothen the transition by sliding the vertices in the middle of the neck. We want these vertical edges that connect to the body to the head to be as straight as possible. Activate symmetry. Either hold Ctrl Shift while you move the vertices or set Transform Constraint to Edge. Then add another edge loop into the neck near his head with multicut. Have edge flow enabled. We want the geometry to bend nicely when he will move his head. Add another cut to the lower part of the neck. Great work everyone! We have almost finished the head. We are ready to move on to start modeling what remains of it. We are still missing the hair, mouth and the eyes. If you've liked this video guide so far, please feel free to check out our YouTube channel for other guides. Follow us on social media to see what we're up to. And until next time, I wish you all happy modeling. See you soon.